Scotty Scheffler is one of the most consistent, best golfers on the planet, and some might say rather underrated. His bank balance won't say that, but he doesn't quite get as much of the attention as a lot of other players. So I wanted to highlight a couple of things that every golfer can benefit from that he does to give him a simple swing, a consistent, powerful swing, and enables him to just go out and play really good solid golf and I wager not only is it going to help fix a lot of your problems it's going to help you play better golf today. I'm going to show you two things you don't have to do both of them but either can work exceptionally well depending on what your problem or things that we need to try and fix. First one is going to be about plane wrist angles kind of thing and getting width and the other is going to stop the early extension or over the top movement. I don't want to focus too much on what to not do in this lesson. I just want to very quickly highlight what it's going to help you not do. So a lot of problems where we have inconsistency on the backswing is when we are trying to take the club away and the hands work too much or the body works too much and we end up being, it's not really true, but like off plane. And this is a variable that some days it's here, some days it's there. So we want to try and find something that gives us a bit of repeatability. Now you've probably seen the L where we get the arms to parallel and we form this wrist angle and then we form the L on the way through. This is primarily about the backswing. But what Scotty does, and it's a very, very old drill, it just takes it a little bit further because it helps the angles, but also width. What he does, he grabs a pencil and you can use a T-peg or a pencil. I like using a pencil because it's, going to give you a bit more of a observational visual as you're going through. So you put it in the end of the club here. And one thing it's going to help on the takeaway is if you do have a tendency to use the hands too much, it's really going to show you where that pencil is pointing. All right. We want it to pretty much be pointing at us on the takeaway. Let's not worry about how you're getting there. Let's just try and make that a goal instead of it being either too much this way, too much that way, too much this way. Let's just try and get it pointing to the trail thigh as we get to about here. All right, that's a pretty easy, repeatable base checkpoint that you can have. Once we utilize the pencil there, we can use it on the halfway back to see, all right, where's that pointing now? Is it pointing towards the ball? But what Scotty does, he takes it and he's worked with his coach for a long time at this and it's a constant that he's always working on. Imagine that, one of the best players in the world doing the same thing constantly not bouncing around from tip to tip and you need to do the same find the two three things that you work on that you need to work on and stick with them for a while they're going to be the base and there's a good chance this will be one of them but from the top of the swing he's trying to see this visual all right is my pencil pointing back down towards the ball at the top of the swing and even on its way down that simple visual really helps you paint the picture but stops a lot of over manipulation and it gets a nice amount of width because if I'm too narrow that pencil isn't really pointing back at the ball it's about here to get a bit of extra width we can try and feel that the pencil is still sort of pointing towards the ball like not quite there but about here momentum will take us a bit further but then the pencil is pointing back at the ball back at the ball until we release and that's it. So you can have a few shots just trying to observe where that pencil is pointing. And you'll start finding that you're dialing a bit more of a neutral pattern, a neutral sequence. It's going to stop the weird sort of funky ones. So we don't have to watch it all the time as we're swinging back, but we can really pay a bit of mind to it to see. Get that T-peg or pencil pointing at the ball. It's so simple, but so effective. Now we are on to the downswing and that transition to stop us getting over the top. He has a kind of unusual movement that you'll see, especially on big drives. You'll see a lot of kind of crazy footwork. His left foot is sort of spinning out and his right foot is often moving backwards. One of the biggest swing killers is this early extension of thrusting, the lower body forward and up, the chest raising up. And it's sometimes very difficult to feel like, okay, I've got to keep the backside out and I've got to kind of turn over it to give myself the room. 
There's other ways of trying to combat that, but there's a good chance that this might give you a big bang for your buck. And what I'm talking about is banking the trail foot. And there's a couple of phases to this. And Scotty's is kind of the extreme end, but there's a drill that I'm gonna show you with a basket, but here's the feel. A consistency killer is basically the feet raising up too much, being too active in the knees. So banking, and a lot of good ball strikers will do this, actually at impact, this foot has banked. It's rolled on its way on the inside, okay? Now that looks and feels weird when I'm not doing it dynamically because I wouldn't really do that. But if all my energy is moving forward, I want my foot to bank. What causes the problem is this right hip here, if I spin that out and forward this way, I lose the space as I'm trying to hit through. So then I have to kind of stand up to make room or I have to come over the top to make the room as well. If I carry on this path, I'm gonna hit all sorts of bad shots. So this banking action helps everything move forward that way, but clears it out the way to give me that dynamic impact. And it's actually more repeatable than you perhaps realize. If you can, just grab a range basket and we're gonna put it under the trail foot. Some people call this kind of an ankle breaker, but what we're trying to do here is really accentuate the feeling of keeping everything back and rolling the foot in. So it's moving this way rather than this way. If I do a bad swing here, it's going to look something like that. And it kind of hurts because it hits my shin. But if I want to keep everything back and roll that ankle in to have everything dynamically move this way and give myself the space, the bucket is going to really give me that over in exaggeration feeling. So you can practice this many, many times, even at home with or without a club, you know, you can just practice the same feeling to feel getting through that way. So we're banking the foot. It's almost like we're staying in a barrel and more connected here rather than trying to thrust everything forward. So the bucket drill is a really cool thing to do, but be careful with it. If you don't have a bucket, you can try what Scotty does. You see it mostly on drives, but you can see it sometimes in irons. And he's going to do some swings. But as he comes down just about through impact here, because of the basket not being there, he's rolling his foot in. But to really give him that extra sensation of keeping this right hip back rather than the right hip moving forward, the left hip is sort of coming back. We're pushing into the ground here. The left hip is coming back. He's going to feel that actually the torque is pushing this way. Okay, the torque is pushing that way. And you could be able to feel this on like a slidey floor or something, but from the backswing, we actually want here. So as we hit a few little shots, I want you to feel like as you're approaching impact, you're actually sliding your foot back a little bit. I'm just gonna do like a half swing here, like that. You need to start getting comfortable with it. Don't try and go full pace or anything. We're just trying to build up a tolerance to feel this left hip opening to open up, but keep that trail foot back. And as you get more comfortable, you can start adding a little bit more speed to accelerate through. And you can keep that foot back. That's one of the best keys he does. It's kind of a weird foot movement, but it has a very good purpose for him. So even one of the best players in the world is kind of always constantly doing something. And you might think that's a swing nuance, but he does it intentionally because it fixes one of his main problems, which is the right hip spinning open. So it works. It works very well. Now, if you want to be a little bit more like Scotty Scheffler around the green, check out this video. It's so easy to have these simple steps that you can execute from like 100 yards in and your scores will plummet. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.